from Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater, and hello to all my friends at thecrookedstep.com. Freezing. It was, uh, we were in Madrid and Barcelona. It was beautiful. I was back in my shorts, <laughs> and now I'm back in my sweatshirt, so I can't. No, the shows here in Spain have been uh, awesome. You know, we, we really can see the growth from album to album. Every time we come here, the audiences get bigger and better, and there's always a lot of passion from the Spanish audience. You can really feel it on stage. Actually, the record company has been asking me for some live tracks to use for promotion, and uh, I was so happy with last night's show that I'm gonna pull a couple of tracks from Oh, the show in Madrid. Um, yeah, you know, it's possible. When we wrote Scenes from a Memory, it was written, you know, in that order and it kind of felt like it was one big piece. And also, um, the second disc of Six Degrees was conceptual. That was written as one big piece. Um, so yeah, you know, it's possible that we could do another concept album in the future. To me, it's a very artistically satisfying way to make a record. You know, all of my favorite albums are concept albums, you know, from other bands. The, to me, the only negative side of it is that you're expected to play it that way live on stage. And, and I, you know, after the Scenes from a Memory Tour, after playing the same thing, you know, 100 nights in a row, it made me fucking crazy. So, you know, uh, that's the only downside of it, but it's possible that we could, you know, continue doing something like that in the future. No, 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 no. We, you know, yeah. I've been singing on uh, really every album since Seems From Memory, you know, you know, everything from like The Glass Bridge and whatever. So uh, I don't think it's anything new. I think maybe it's just maybe more predominantly noticeable on tracks like Dark Eternal Night and Constant Motion just because, you know, for the heavier tracks I think it was important to have some kind of balls. You know, James has a naturally high operatic voice, so I think my voice kind of helps ground it a little bit and give it a little bit more, you know, kind of street power. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I mean, only because live I get bored playing drums. I need something else to keep me busy. Staring at the empty page before. Well, I am writing lyrics based on that because um, it's something that's part of my life that has helped me. So to write about it helps me even more. I have always written lyrics about things out of my life. And uh, to me, it's been a, a good topic to write about. It's been very therapeutic for me because, you know, I've been sober now for seven and a half years and uh, to write about it is just therapeutic for me. Uh, well, this latest album has steps eight and nine, so there's three left and I hope to complete that on the next album and be over and done with the whole project. Uh, yeah, we really enjoyed it. In fact, so much so that we did five shows like that in America later that year. And um, yeah, it, w it was fun because it wasn't really unplugged. It was just, you know, more intimate. Um, you know, John was still playing electric. I was still playing drums, but to scale down. Um, but it was fun. For me, it was mainly fun because I was able to write in a set list that was different, you know, more of the the more ballad songs also um, I put a lot of like unreleased and b-sides into the set list and also a lot of cover tunes like Elton John and Pink Floyd so it was fun yeah would we do it again sure uh, it's not in any immediate plans but um, and of course anything can happen at any time so who knows. Uh, no question for me personally I prefer live for me studio it's a good creative environment, but it's basically us just playing to four walls, you know, um, and it's it's very um, it's a very artistically satisfying situation. But you're making music that people aren't going to hear for many many months down the road. I like the immediate um, satisfaction of being yeah. on stage and being able to interact with an audience and feel the response. To me, I prefer that. To be 
honest, um, I'm, I'm a huge film fan and film fanatic, but one of my least interesting sides of that is the musical score side. That's not something I pay attention to. I'm, when I'm watching film, I'm paying more attention to the direction, the cinematography, the editing, uh, you know, everything that the director was a part of. It, for me, it's a visual um, thing. Uh, you know, but Dream Theater has always um, been excited by the, the idea or the prospect of scoring a film instrumentally. You know, I think a lot of, if you listen to a lot of our instrumental music, you know, dating all the way back to Eve, all the way up to like the, over, the Six Degrees Overture, I mean, that's very, very cinematic sounding music. And, uh, and even um, like if you look at, listen to the Liquid Tension Experiment, some of the um, improvisational stuff, or especially like this Liquid Trio Experiment that was just released, it's, it's very, you know, the, the improv side of Dream Theater has always been very cinematic. So we, we would do it in a heartbeat if we were offered the right situation.